Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of the UK Connection. And happy or Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. Hope you're enjoying your Saturday. And uh, thanks for spending a little bit of time with us here today for another uh, Ranking the Songs on a Classic Album. I may doubt whether this is a classic album we're talking about here today, but I'm told it is. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes. So, uh, Simon Brain, and Stephen Reed, of course, are with me once again. Howdy, gentlemen. Merry Christmas to you all. Good evening, afternoon, Merry Christmas, Happy New Saturday, all of those kind of things. All that good stuff, all that good stuff. So we've got uh, an album by the probably the, one of the bands that have been requested the most on this channel by the viewers to me for years and years and years. And I always just say, wow, I'm not into them. I'm not going to talk about a band I'm not into, right? Or I don't know anything about. And what we decided, you know, we made a pact that, uh, you know, when we do these ranking the songs on classic albums, there's going to be times where one or more of us really aren't much into that band at all. But in the spirit of doing this show, we're going to we're going to tackle them. So today we're going to talk about Mutter by Lamstein. Yes. And uh, we would like to talk a little bit about uh, the history and the sales of this fine album would you like to start us off Stephen? Uh, i think this is more simon's band i would suggest would that not be fair to say oh but yeah well, 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 I, i'm getting ahead of myself uh beverages i totally forget it's, you know there you go. sorry simon <laughs> i saw by the look on simon's face he's like he's forgetting again <laughs> yeah oh do you know what i'm gonna do peter i'm gonna make up for you not drinking today. Okay. I'm going to make up for you not drinking today by having two drinks. Okay. Don't know if I've mentioned that I've been dying. I, I, I kind of keep it quiet, you know, not on the down low and don't, don't whine like a baby about it all the time. <laughs> not all the time. 98% of the time. So I've, I've got two drinks on the go at the moment, one of which is strictly uh, medicinal. I've got, and could I be any more Lancastrian at the moment? I've got a whole bottle of Benedictine with me. Why do I feel so? But why do I feel so Lancastrian about this Benedictine? It's a it's a liqueur from uh, Belgium, and most of the Benedictine in the world is drunk in Burnley, apparently, in the Miners Club in Burnley. You know, you, you go to Burnley, you've got to have a ben, Benny in hot water. I do. I feel like shit. So I'm having Benny and hot water. It's hilarious if you go into a, a, a hostel where you're in, can have a, a Benny and hot with ice. <laughs> Always funny. <laughs> I've worked behind a bar. It's fucking hilarious. But, uh, <laughs> but also, strict for enjoyment purposes, I've got a beer with me called... Um, Jingle Bell Rock, because I am so festive. Nice. nice. Uh, from the Pennine Brewing Company, yes, I get, yeah, again, I've gone, to, gone over to Yorkshire, and um, this is just a sexy uh, 4.2. I poured it about three hours ago, just as you were finishing off the Tom Petty thing. <laughs> um, isn't that a sexy-looking colour? Oh, yeah. I like that. Nice. Mm. So Indeed. I nearly said I'm going to pleasure myself with this, so, yeah. Also, I would point out that um, I have prepared nothing about the history of Ramstein because I always think that's Stephen's job. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if I've mentioned I've been poorly. No, you haven't mentioned it, Simon. I'm really pleased that you have mentioned it. Okay, Good. yeah. So just, not be, being just be thankful I don't tell you how I've been poorly. No, let's not. Let's not. We don't. We don't need. Peter knows. Well, Does I hope, he? I hope you feel better, Simon. Yeah. Did, did you give him sound effects? I did, and everything. <laughs> so, what are you drinking, Simon? What am I drinking? I am drinking from the Seventy One Brewing Company from Dundee. I'm drinking Luminous Nights. It sounds really quite dodgy. It has to be said. I don't know if I want my nights to be luminous. And this <laughs> is. <laughs> 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 Mine have been. Why would that be, Simon? Don't know. It's because I've been poorly. I don't know if I've mentioned it. <laughs> I don't know. You really should have told us all about that. Yeah. Okay. So this is a New England DIPA. Do we know what a DIPA is? Double IPA. 
It's a double IPA. So it's an I IPA. That, do you see that stuff that you're drinking? That That's all over my area in, in yeah. New York. Yeah. I see I I find that, that stuff everywhere. I gathered that from the fact that I poured that into my 71 drink glass here, and it looks like custard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and all of the pictures that I see from the in the proxy guys do like to share a picture of, of a beverage in a glass on the chat that we have. And I do comment often, why are you drinking custard? I think I'm about to find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it looks, see, I don't think that does look appetizing. I think that looks like something that has had things washed in it. You see, know, that's very, that's very common here now. So that's, that's normal looking beer. Yeah. I, I don't know. The brewery for that beer you're drinking, where are they from? The brewery? The brewery is in Dundee. Okay. So that's 22 miles from where I live. Okay. Less than right. that, actually, from where I live. Um, but yeah, it's clearly not a local idea, even like the design, the tin and everything. It looks much more like the sort of thing that you would buy. Absolutely. That, that, yeah. That's why I saw it. And then I saw the luminous and I'm like, I think I've seen that somewhere. But the, I highly doubt it. But yeah. We are starting to see an, a few more of these kind of garish tins that us traditional people really you know, sh shouldn't be partaking in. So the question is whether my custard is nice or not. I mean, I won't be putting it on my trifle, but it's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's very, very, very hoppy, very citrusy. Mm. Yeah, most of those New England IPAs are like that. Yeah, it's like you get this big whole kind of like grapefruit, tangerine thing. Little. Yeah, very grapefruit. Definitely get that. That's lovely. Mm. <laughs> I'm converted to, to alcoholic custard. There you go. Well, I've got my iced tea today, so uh, yeah, no, no beer for me today. But um, sorry, guys. I know I suck. Anyway, uh, off to Stephen to uh, talk a little bit about the sales history and whatnot of uh, this Rammstein album. Rammstein. Yes, <clears throat> indeed. So this is Mutter. This is the German Masters third album. Uh, it was released on the 2nd of April 2001 through Motor and Universal Music. Uh, and this is held really as the classic. However, there are really strong albums, both in terms of material and sales either side. This, as these kind of albums tend to do, massive in Europe, massive in Europe. So number one in Germany, number one in Austria. We're talking top 10 in Belgium. And if you've ever heard Biff Byford, there's fuck all wrong with Belgium. Um, it was number four in the Dutch charts. It was number two in the Swedish charts. I mean, it has been ginormous in Europe, number one in the Swiss charts. And therefore it got to number 77 in the US charts and number 86 in the UK album charts. And that just kind of shows, I think, the relationship that we have with this kind of music in these markets. At that stage, they have grown in popularity since, and more, I would say, in notice. And the kind of venues that they play now are fitting to the shows that they put on. I've never seen them. I must change that, because they're playing Dynorma Domes now over here too. Yeah, yes, the it was, I would suggest where this started. Sure in that terms of trajectory. Would you agree with that, Simon? I would indeed, yeah. Um, I saw them on the Mutter tour in, on, oh, God, the ticket gave it up for me. Whoa. Uh, I know, 18th of May, 2002, uh, Manchester Apollo, which isn't a small venue, but as I may have mentioned before, they, they couldn't fit the entire stage show in. Oh, no, 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 no. Not even close. So they have, they have tons and tons of these, um, I want to say pylons, but they're not really pylons. Things that go up and down that make fire and stuff like that. And they could fit three of them in. Yeah. And uh, it was so hot. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. Because, you know, I always like to stand relatively close to uh, look at stage left as you're looking towards the stage. And, Oh, it was like a sauna, but really, really good. And you know, you won't you won't see them in venues that small again. The next time I saw them was at Manchester Arena, and uh, it didn't grab me quite quite as much. No, no, the, the uh, Manchester Arena is a fairly shit venue. So let's move along, shall we? Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh look, with the sound. Oh, there you go. Okay, there it is. So, um, yes, I, w I would concur. It's the, it's the, you know, they were pretty big in mainland Europe, weren't they? You know, Du was a, was a major hit, wasn't it? You know, uh, this is the one that made people go, holy cow. Certainly me. 
oh, look at that. Let's have a, let's pay attention to this. And uh, I did. Cool. So should I do more context? I can do context. That I did do. I can even get it right. I can even get it right this week. <laughs> I can do that. So um, I've got two pieces of context for you. This is exciting. Uh, one of which is to do with Mr. P. Pardo. Ooh. Yeah, back. Uh, I'm sure you remember, Stephen, because you did, you did this exercise apparently in 2009. But in 2011, he said, hey, Simon, why don't you tell us about, all about your favorite desert island CDs? So I did. And um, one of them, bizarrely enough, was Mutter by Ramstein. I, I, I actually chose this as one of the records I cannot live without. I don't remember saying that, but I, I thought it could well be. You know, this would have made so much more sense when we'd done, say, sticks, because they're in there as well. Uh, but anyhow, uh, yes, I said it's, uh, what did I say? It's uh, me mental and romantic. I stand by that. Let, oh, yeah, mental and romantic. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. You could say those things back in the day. But uh, yeah. Um, so what year, what year was that again? 2009? Did you say that we did this? Well, I'm Steve, trying to remember. Like... Stevens was 2009, but mine's 2011. Okay. Well, obviously, we didn't have the channel yet. So it was probably something we posted on the website at some point. Yeah. So, uh, it was something you asked us to do when we joined the team on the website. Yes. Absolutely. Ah, yeah, for the FAQ page. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Yes, 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 wow, it's yes, yes. a long time ago. Jesus. Yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. Maybe it should be updated. Anyhow, um, on the week that Ramstein hit the massive heights of number 86, um, this week, this is all true, the number one album across the United, the United Kingdom was Mr. I've Got No Talent, Roman Keating with Destination. Do you reckon somewhere people are sat, sat there deconstructing the album Destination by Ron and Keaton? I suspect. Well, I, I, I would happily deconstruct it by standing on it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Um, it's unlucky indeed. that I have no idea who that is. Oh, you must go and Google some of his phenomenal hits. He's just so good. Yeah. really is. Just a, just a mega talent. Less individual, yeah. Yes, he's broadened, he's broadened it, uh, broadened his repertoire into broadcasting now, and it's really oh, yeah. Uh, he's, he's thankfully equally as talented at that as well, really. Is isn't he? Yes, indeed. Look at look at us dissing Ron and Keating, yeah, fantastic. Um, <laughs> Enrique Iglesias was number two, yeah, I know. Lulu was number four because it was also 1968. Nickelback. Silver side up, we're in the top 10. Um, some crazy, crazy uh, shit. Anastasia, she was she was just climbing out of the Where Are They Now uh, uh, box. Yeah. Celine Dion, just all these absolute talent vacuums selling <laughs> loads of records, whilst Ramstein was number 86. Puddle of Mud, they were bigger. They, they were on the 17th week on the charts. Just, just saying. Um, it's not as good as the charts in the 1970s, is it, really? No. <laughs> That's definitely my takeaway from this exercise as well. <laughs> just, just, just really, really isn't, is yeah. it? You know? I, and then, I can't, can't do how many albums did I have this week on this one. <laughs> no. You'd be like, ah, uh, yeah, none. I think I'm on the one, and we're talking about it. So, um, <laughs> oh, no, the, I've got the Hives album. Yes, got that. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah, Star Sailor. Oh, Christ, I hated them. But yeah, and uh, oh, Vapor Trails from Rush. That was there as well, just to, right. just to make you crazy kids. Yeah, you can find uh, goodness okay. for that. It's, it's not even classic Rush, but we'll take it. Right, yes. Yeah, yeah so, um, yeah, what a, what a terrible time for music 2002 really did appear to be, didn't it? And there were Ramstein coming to uh, save certainly your Uncle Simon, if not your Uncle Peter. Yeah. We'll see, right? I mean, we'll norm normally for this, I will give you a rundown of what was in the top ten. <sighs> Is it worth it? I don't really know. We should just I start mean, talking about the songs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a few months later, before this actually peaked in in the seventies in the US, we had things like Blink One Eight Two. I mean, it's better than what you've read out, Simon. Do you know? I mean, Stained Survivor were at number three. No, sorry, Destiny's Child was Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> 
the Moulin Rouge soundtracks kicking about. We've got now six. You know, I'm gonna eat my pen. Duel with Lateralis is in the charts. I mean, I'm just I'm scrolling down trying to find something that's vaguely good. Drops of Jupiter, Jupiter by Train. That 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 was pre them disappearing up the own arts. That's an okay album. An actual fact. I I don't hate that album, and that's kind of where we are with the charts of this at Lincoln Park. I mean, this I'm trying to find the highlights here. This is the highlights of what I'm trying to find it. It is, yeah. This is, yeah. Nearly. Dire. It's very dire. Yeah. Number 25, Paul McCartney, Wingspan Hits in History. You know? Great collection. It is a great collection. And it's not often I'm highlighting greatest hits and things, but as you scroll down this chart, uh, Tim McGraw, no. Travis, no. Toop, no. Anyway, so, Mutter. <laughs> Simon, what are your... Uh... Bottom four on the Mutter album. Oh, bottom four. Crazy, Whoa. crazy choice. Okay, I can do this. <laughs> and I'm going to take three hours to do it. I'm going to wreak my revenge on you two. So um, my bottom four, that means I go to seven, doesn't it? Okay, doing the math. As you Good know, math. can say. Right, my, um, I would say, because I, what I've done is I've employed what I like to call the read system. Oh, yes. And I would say that everything on this record, for me, because we know that I love this record, is at least a 7.8753 out of 10. <laughs> I've, I've shoved it through the, uh, through, the, uh, through the formula, and everything is a 7.8753 out of 10. I, I can already see the man from the Kipsy going... <laughs> <laughs> How 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 tightly packed are these rankings? I mean, that's that is precise, Sam. That's very precise. That those are the, the, it's only the bottom two that are actually given that number two. Everything else is just above at least an eight. Ah. But you know, this is just I can so mix it up with you answers we go. Up. I can do that. Big numbers. <laughs> yeah, numbers aren't my thing. My my least favorite song, but I love it, is um, Adios. Um, really nice guitar effects. Really nice. Very nice. 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 It's nice. Uh, so that to me is a little bit of damning with faint praise. Um, mm. Neville is uh, my number 10. It's Cynthia. It's a tragic ballad. The guitar is great again. But, you know, those two are, are definitely my least favourite. They have been um, since 2022. Um, the rest of them have moved up and down over the last few days whilst I've been listening on my sick bed. Um, don't know if I've mentioned that. Yes, indeed. So I'm going to go with nine, uh, being uh, Ryan Rouse. If my throat wasn't killing me, I'd even try and do it properly, but I'm not going to. Or um, else. Thank you. I like, the, I like the way you were moving your stein as well, though, Stephen. Yes, my um, Peter, stein. Peter, yeah, that's good. Yep. Um, that's that's my number nine. It's really very, very powerful. <clears throat> I would guide you towards the version on Volker Ball, because that's really good. Phenomenally heavy bait to that off. Yes, indeed. Um, and my eight is... Uh, fire fry. Bang bang. Absolutely. Kept it down a bit because uh, Triple X is such a shit film. Um, yeah, just just saying, <laughs> it's it's a bit poor, isn't it? But you know when when you know the sir the sirens start, you think, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, and you think, oh, I feel there's going to be some pyros coming along. Now, there's a thing I'd like to say about um. But around time, some people, some people say that you uh, you can't uh, kind of like separate the visuals from the um, from the sound, and they're not as good without them. Mm, that's not true. It's really not true. It, they do, however, work very very well. They're you know they're kind of like kissing that way in the way that they're they're kind of packaged. There's an artistic vision there. Actually, there probably isn't with Kiss, is there? But there is an artistic vision there with Ramstein. And that artistic vision is, we don't give a fuck. Yeah. We, we really don't give a flying shit what anyone else says. We're going we're gonna to put out the most monstrous, um, offensive shit that we can do. And we're going to stay true to that for 20 odd years. And, you know, I can absolutely get down with that. But... The other thing about Kiss is some lots of people's that Ramsteins, they're all the same song. And I don't get that. 
I can see why some people do, because it's quite a lot where there's lots and lots of noise, quite a bit, lots of lots of noise. A bit like modern horror films, to be More honest. More on that later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he's really not entering into this, is he really? You know, he's just no, really, he's not, not getting like, in the spirit of it at all. I, I, at, I, I at least liked some Black Sabbath, didn't I? And that's the only other, other one of these. I remember episodes. that Led Zeppelin episode was a little rough, but okay, yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, uh, yeah, Five Fries, uh, very much my uh, number eight. So, yeah. Next. Okay, so for me, well, I, I have I have obviously therefore done the Stephen Reed ranking system because it's mine. Okay, so I have ranked these out of 10, <laughs> and some definitely come below 6. Point, what was it, 7.32516? 7.8753. Pay attention. Make notes if you have to. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Anyway, oddly enough, and I'm, well, you write it down for me and hand it over when we're finished. Okay. So, oddly enough, it's unusual to see. Thank you. If only I had a bit of paper here to have taken that. But anyway, oddly enough, it's a title track for me that, that ranks really low. Okay. It's, I just lose interest in that one. It's, strings are thoughtfully placed. There's lots of strings on this album. I mean, it really is an album about the arrangement, and I would agree with Simon. There's a lot of nuance here that people don't necessarily talk about for Ramstein. Yes, the formula is often not as <clears throat> However, there's a lot that goes on beyond that. And for me, I think that, that Mutter just kind of, it does a good job on the album. It breaks up the onslaught. But as a standalone, let's rank them. I'm okay with it. Don't love it. I'm not going to tell you what I scored at Simon because I, I believe there's a rumour going about you've not been well and I wouldn't want to add to that. Okay, so number 11 for me is Nebel. Okay, for such a full force album, that is a really considered way to close it out. It's another kind of slower paced song. It's allowed to meander a little bit. There's some restrained guitars. There's an actual vocal. And I don't mean that rudely, as in there's a lot of the singing that is, you can't really call it singing. It's definitely vocals. There's a distinction between sometimes between singing and vocals. And most of the voice on this album, I would suggest, are vocals, whether it's because they're chanted or not shouted, but there's the, or some of them are spoken. But there's a proper actual vocal here, and it's really good but it just doesn't really connect with me in the same way. But I do understand why, you, to me, you can't have an album that is one note. I just don't necessarily connect with that side of it in the same way that I do with some of the other tracks that are on here. So after that, for me, it's Lynx 234. To me, that kind of hits home like an industrial metal dance anthem. There are long passages of kind of tension and it, they're released through like explosions and the are grating guitars and the shouts and all of the guitar solo comes in and you think so how long have they kept Angus Shung in that cover just to go and then put them back again it's the bizarrest thing it, it's like you get 10 seconds of an ACDC guitar solo and you just kind of like, there's nothing wrong with it. And, and I mean, I'm already at a stage where I really like this album. It's infectious and it's memorable and, and it does the job that it's meant to do. And then after that, I want oh, pronunciations. I am sorry for anyone that can speak this language because I most certainly cannot. Spieler. Okay. And that, I mean, that's a deep track. And as you go through the album on YouTube, it's very interesting because the top half of the album have videos and the bottom half don't. <laughs> It's a really weird split. So I don't know if the intention was to video eyes the whole album or if it was just, you know, they think that the, the gold is at the top. I'm not really sure. But either way... I think it just went six, as, as they say in the industry, six singles deep, didn't it? Yeah, but, I mean, it was six singles deep at the start of the album. Uh, so the, I, was about, I was about to say, like, Thriller, but that was, like... 38 singles, <laughs> Yeah, there was more singles on that album than there was songs. <laughs> exactly. But that's it. I mean, this is a... I've never a noticed mess. that before. Good <laughs> I've only just realised. Um, this is a kind of mid-paced, 
There's a judder of the drums, harsh guitars, but there's a ton of melody in there. I mean, there's a strange kiddie-like keyboard line. The guitars are really on buzzsaw territory, and I, I really quite like that. But there's sound effects on here on the secondary vocals that really work. And I think there's a lot of thought being put into this. As, as Simon has mentioned, I think a lot of people view Rammstein as quite throwaway, quite simple, quite just, this is what we do and let's have the effects. Much more going on than that here. And I'm all, I'm still in the bottom four. So that, that is my bottom four. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, I, will, that was... I, will, I will have both of you know that I bought this on CD when it first came out. Because oh. I heard Rammstein, we're all... And I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of weird, kind of interesting, but I love the riff, right? I was like, all right, I guess the whole album is probably like that. I'll buy it. I probably sold it six months after I got it, after I tried to get into it. You know what's really weird about Rammstein here in the States? I meet a lot of people who seem to really like the band and they look forward to when they tour and they go to see them. I don't think they buy any of their albums. I think this is one of those bands here that like, you don't need to know their music or buy their records. You just go see them live and have a blast. Like, Oh, the, the concert is so much fun. It's the greatest live show on the earth. You know, I think the fire and the, the weirdness and the, I think that is what attracts people. I don't think anybody gives a shit about their actually their albums or their songs. They just it's it's the live experience. That's just my impression that I get. Anyway, my number eleven, uh Nebel. Boring. Don't like it. Um number 10. Ich will ich will ich uh, I C H W I L ich ich will I don't know how how to say any of this kind of stuff. Um Here's my issue with this band and this album. Um, I don't like the vocals at all. And I know people are going to be watching. It's like, but Pete, you listen to that horrible death metal stuff and that black metal stuff, and you listen to crazy Italian prog bands and all this other stuff. How can you not get into them? I don't. The 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 way he over-exaggerates the pronunciation of everything. German is a, a harsh language as it is to the ears, to me anyway. Uh, I think he over-exaggerates it, and it's grating beyond belief to me. Again, we all hear things differently. I don't know. Maybe some people don't give a crap. I don't know. To me, it ruins a lot of this album and this band for me. Um, and the vocals, I find it's a lot of repetitive stuff. I, and I don't like his inflection. Um, but anyway, Ick Will, the music, the song just doesn't grab me at all. Uh, my number nine is Sonne, Son, Son, S-O-N-N-E. Um Another, just another example. I just, I'm not digging the riffs much. I don't like the vocals much. Another thing that bothers me about this band is that they will like hit you like with some sledgehammer riffing for like 30 minutes, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. And then the guitar stop and he comes in, does his thing. And then you're like, okay. And then you wait another minute. And then maybe the guitars come in for a short period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they stop. And then some weird synthesizer stuff comes in and then maybe you get some drums and then the rhythms come back in. It's this stop, start, stop, start, nonstop thing throughout this whole album. It drives me nuts. Anyway, <laughs> my number eight, uh, Fewer Fry. Um, I kind of like the riffs here. Again, it's got those, you know, big pounding riffs in the synths. It's, it sounds like I've heard some of these riffs already on the album. Um, it's like it's very monotonous to me. And uh I don't know. Bang, bang. No, thanks. Um, yeah. doesn't really do much for me. So that's, that's my bottom four. Next. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> is, this, is this cathartic for you, Peter? Are you enjoying this? No, I, just, I knew this was coming, I, but I wanted that's... to give it, I wanted to give it a shot. I was like, cause I'm like, all right, I, I tried, you know, cause I know this album is looked at as probably their best and I bought it because, you know, for a reason back in the day and I, hated it for a reason and i figured out ah, a long time ago let me see if my opinions have changed on this and i listened to it a couple of times i'm like oh my god here we go again anyway that's okay let's say you can't love okay. it glad i asked okay my my seven is svita which i believe means hermaphrodites <laughs> which it's always cool i don't think there's enough songs on, on that subject matter um again i just just every, I, I love every, everything about it uh, I really want to talk about Ich Will, because you know what I like best about my number six song, Ich Will? 
It's the over-exaggerated vocals. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I feel, I feel like you need all those. <clears throat> so I, really, I really, really do. And you can see why the songs that were chosen as singles were chosen as, chosen as singles. You, you can, and there was a big, I don't know if you remember, Steve, a big kerfuffle about when... Uh, some of these songs were released like my, my five links, two, three, four. They're Nazis. They're Nazis. Yeah. Turns out, turns out yeah. they're from East, East Germany. Mm-hmm. Actually, quite liberal. But um, what, what a fucking onslaught. Links, two, three. Or sorry, links, sorry, three, from whatever it is. Uh, what, a, what an absolute metal onslaught that, uh, that really, uh, really, really is. Um, and my four is Sonna, which I do actually find difficult to. Uh, separate from the video because i remember seeing the video with the, with the uh snow white character mm-hmm. and um being a little bit scared shitless at the time uh, and i would have been uh, into pro- just in well, in my 30s and um you know what just wow you know it's, it's such a good Great sounding record. Jacob Helner does such a good job. I've listened to it incessantly over the past few days. Probably haven't listened to it for a very long time. You know, it's one of those records that you don't. I, I don't need to. You know, we said said that a lot recently, haven't we? There are some records that you just don't need to know. They're there because you spent some time with them previously, uh, and by some time, you mean tons and tons and tons of time uh, with them. And it's a great record. But these songs that I'm just talking about in the middle. Um, Links, um, Sweeter, Sona, Ichvel. The, the, I think what they said was, do you know what? I feel like we need to start filling stadia. You know, we're pretty big now, but we need we need to like make these songs touch more bombast- bombastic than we have been. We've been quite bombastic already, haven't we, Josh? Yes, yes, we have. Let's take it to the. Let's ah, take- yeah. Let's take it very much to their next level, shall we? Yes, indeed. And I think um, with the, the, those songs, they uh, they, re- they really, really did. And uh, oh, I can't. I just, I just, I'm actually living to see what Peter thinks. But first, <laughs> oh dear, it was that the four, was it, Craigie? Yeah. Okay. So and I, I noticed that we are going to end up me and you quite like you you at least quite like that we're gonna have radically different top top three and four yeah it would appear that way yeah absolutely i i have a strange relationship with this band because i did have this album and i had i think the one before and the two after i don't currently have any of them i don't dislike them though how do you lose albums pardon how do you lose albums no i didn't lose i parted with them I did okay. go through a phase where I, I, the, the idea was to thin things out, and that that is still something that I do have to say. Um, there's not many things I regret parting with. I probably do regret parting with some of these, though. Um, so, yeah, anyway, next is, is Vitter, which is, I mean, you could say it's a stupid little ditty, really. Oh, man, does it stick in the mind? <laughs> it really is. It's there. And that is Vitter, is Vitter. It reminds me of the bit in... Do you remember Babylon Zoo, Simon? Yes, unfortunately I do. It's exactly the same effect on the vocals there, if you listen to them. Anyway, and it's about the contrast, I think. Do you know, because there's quite a lot playing off each other. It is easy to say there's a formula here. Um, It would be really easy for Peter to say that. With droning riffs that kind of... But they cut deep. And... It's but see, this, of- this song is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. You have these big booming riffs and they stop and then you get the you know little blippy synths and him coming in and there's nothing else going on and then that stops and then the riffs comes back. It's this constant stop-start thing that drives me nuts about their music. I, I think in many ways, though, the two of you have touched on part of the reason for that, I would guess, okay? And I would say I would guess. I've not been fortunate enough to see this band live. But a lot of the stop-start nature, I would think, would get people involved when you're at the gig. There's a lot of opportunity to interact here. There's a lot of opportunity to get the crowd screaming in between things, Do you know, because there is that kind of in your face, in your face, everybody's up, and then it's, and then it's off it goes again. And it gigs, there's lots of bands actually deconstruct their own songs and ruin them 
to give you those moments where they'll play a bit and you think, oh, I love this song, and they stop and, and you're like, oh, fucking play the thing. Whereas with this, it's all kind of naturally there. I think it's really quite clever and really quite effective the way that it's put together. Um, after that, it's Sauna for me. Same again, there's some actual singing on this song. I'm not really sure I like that the more I hear of the, the actual singing. I much prefer the spoken harshness. I, I can quite connect with the vocals in this song. I like the kind of slow, deliberate mode that goes on. It's And the sampled female vocals that are in the background are certainly heavily affected vocals, or whether it's a keyboard or a synth or whatever. And it cleverly begins to change the mood of the song in the second half. And it's things like that that really make me stay on board with what's going on. I think it would be easy just to hammer it all home. They really don't, I don't think, in that sense. Then Reiner Rouse. So again, there's more depth here. There's more sections and there's a subtle touch that doesn't necessarily appear on all of the tracks, but it's it's buried underneath underneath some searing guitars. There's dramatic strings. Really, I think, see, I, I love the vocals. I think the vocals are really a strong point on this album. And see, again, there's a different feel. I don't think that it is just more and more and more of the same. I think that they add kind of subtle nuance as you go through it. And then for me, it's mine hurts Brent, which is that's classic slow building Rammstein. It's really dramatic, really atmospheric. And yes, this band can live and die on those kind of hammer beats and the vocals that could never be quite so caustic if they had taken that compromise and sung in English. They need to be sung in their native tongue. And I'm all for bands doing that in general. I would much prefer to hear a band sing and mean it and give you the emotion in their own tongue than lose some of that when they translate and some bands who are not English with their native language do a great job of singing in English. Most do, some don't, but when you hear them sing in their own tongue, there just seems to be a, an authenticity that I really connect with. So yeah, help Prince for me. Yeah. yeah, I don't argue that it's authentic. Um, I, I kind of appreciate that. I just don't like them. <laughs> I don't know. Um, like my number seven is Mein Herz Brent, uh, which musically I like that song. I like it a lot. Uh, I think, you know, the riffs are great. There's kind of like this cool, I don't know. I, I listen to the song and I'm hearing like, like almost like night wishy type keyboards, like these symphonic keys, which I think really works here. But man, the vocals are just so over-exaggerated for me. And I'm just kind of like, man, I wish he would just shut up and just let them play because <laughs> I musically, there are parts of this album that really work. You know what? I was, I was thinking about this as we were talking. If I were to take like all the musical bits of this album that I really like, there's like a really good like 20 or 25 minute album here that I can totally get into. But it's like, as as it is, it's just, I have so many problems with it. Uh, number six, Link 234. Uh, I like the militant kind of like, it's it's this good like kind of headbangery, very structured type of song. Uh, I, I'm going to stop making fun of the vocals at this point because it doesn't. At this point, it's it's going to be every single one of these songs. But I think musically, I kind of like this. This is just a good kind of straightforward. We're going to kind of bash you in the head type of track. I don't mind that. Um, number five, the title track. Now this is kind of different. This has it's got like an epic feel. Um, it's a little bit different than like this industrial metal that the rest of the album seems to kind of toil in. I don't really, I haven't been able to put my fingers on exactly what about this song is intriguing to me because I still don't like the vocals, but musically this is going in places that I actually kind of really can appreciate. So that's, uh, that's number five. And my number four is, uh, Zwitter. Is that Zwitter? Zwitter? Zwitter. Yeah. yeah Zwitter. Um, big pulverizing, industrial metal not terrible um you know but again this song this is one of the ones that i really highlighted that i hate that kind of stop start thing because it just to me it breaks up the intensity that when you're listening to it from a you know a record or cd or listening online it breaks up the intensity that they start with the beginning and steven i totally see your point i can see them doing things this way because of the live experience but when you're listening when you're not seeing them in a stadium and you're trying to listen to them at home it's like you're getting into the song and you're like ah, and then it just things stop you know there's the boom, 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 boom. he's like duh, 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 duh. he's doing this thing and then the guitars come back in then they leave and they come back in i'm just like oh can you please just keep it up straight for four minutes 
please i'm begging you right so but not a terrible song um but yeah that's my number four I think we all know that, that Peter spends quite a lot of his time just like smashing his thigh like he's in Rammstein or, you know, and he's, you know, he just he just doesn't feel like he can uh, let the world know yet. But, you know, we're here for you, Peter, whenever you, whenever you decide. <laughs> my, my number three is Mine Hearts Brands. My Heart Brands. Um, so it's... Where they where they uh, where they where they start the album and where it quite clearly says we're different from last time. Look, we've got this orchestra with us and we're going to use the living crap out of it. It's a real living, breathing orchestra, <clears throat> and uh, they, I think they've heard Kashmir as well. I just just want to say that uh, I, I really really like it. This could have been this was number one earlier today. Uh, my number two is uh, Spieler. I really like the deep, the juxtaposition of the uh, Kitty voice and the uh, what many people are describing as uh, irritating voice. Yeah, I really like that. <laughs> so really quite creep, uh, quite uh, <laughs> weird and creepy. A bit like much of the record. Uh, but my number one is uh, the title track Mutter, uh, Mum. I think uh, um, it's got the. That kind of sense, but it's kind of about Mer a, a Mary a Frankenstein's Frankenstein kind of character, isn't it? I believe. Video, I believe it is. Um, yeah. and, and you know the bit where he goes, Mutter, Mutter. I mean, haven't we all done that? Maybe not in German. But you know, mm -hmm. that kind of like uh, <clears throat> falling out with your mother, or maybe she's no longer with us and stuff. And like, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> I can really get down with that kind of like. Mother, what the? Uh, yeah, very, very much so. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's an absolute, complete, and utter epic. Is the title track, Mother? I think it's complete and utter epic um, album. We both uh, mentioned epic. That's interesting because I mm. picked up on this epicness of it as well. Yeah, and, and I think it's the one that set the template for the rest of their career. Yeah. And, the, you know, there are other albums that they do that are almost as good as this, Pete. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait to hear them. Excellent. I look, I look, you know, how I'm working on my uh, favourite, least favourite ranking of uh, Black Sabbath. I'm sure you'll be doing the same with uh, Ramstein. That's right. As <laughs> well. So, yeah, that's my, my number one is uh, oh. Mutter. Let's make a date for this time next year for this, part, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I might be on vacation. <laughs> we'll work around your vacation, Pete. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can just cancel us. <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly along before that gets heard again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are really different here, Simon. It's fascinating because we both like this album. And I actually think that we're further away from being similar to albums where maybe you haven't liked them and I have. <laughs> <laughs> Strange, but there you go. So yeah, my number three is Adios. Um, I, I've got a weakness for the more up-tempo stuff. And I think that this is one of the best in the album. I really like the snare breaks. I think that the, the, the percussion, the drums, yeah, I mean, it's clearly samples and various things that are building and, and, and going on there. It's not just some guy playing, you know, a bass drum and a snare drum in a studio, but it really, I think, heightens what's going on, really important to it, and yet an awful lot of it actually isn't really just doom -ja, doom -ja, but it gives you that base from which everything else seems to grow from, I, I really like that, and it allows the guitars on this song for me to kind of shift up and down through the gears, yet there's still that kind of same feel to them, but I think there's a huge variance here to, to what's happened elsewhere, I think it's really quite clever. My number two, Ich Will. Uh, it's probably the first Ramstein song that I ever heard, and it's lost none of its impact. It's really, yeah, it's hammering guitars. I do seem to be saying the same things. I don't mean that disparagingly at all, because it is its big, and it's bombastic, and it's epic, and it's grandiose, and it's threatening. It's threatening. There's no two ways about it. It is definitely trying to challenge it. And I really like the deliberate vocals. I think they possess a real intensity. And if you really crank this up, it's just so intense. 
and you can't stop yourself from kind of, it's just got that you have to and even if you're sitting down you're kind of marching it's, it's, militant. Really, it's totally militant yeah i mean big time i, am, I yeah. invaded czechoslovakia this afternoon stop <laughs> it <laughs> Here's me wanting about using words like March. Uh, 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 anyway, we're not doing the catalogue of Blitzkrieg, right? It's, but there's an email vocal here that flows in and out and all this kind of thing. I really, really like it. Really like it. I mean, the, the, the kind of top two thirds of this album, I think, are excellent. But the top third, I mean, the, the tracks I'm talking about now are, I think, just phenomenal. And Fure Fry is where I am for my number one. I, this is, to me, as industrial metal as the album gets. And it is a bit day-glow. It, it's not maybe got some of those, maybe more, not nuanced. This is this album, I think, is nuanced, but I think that an awful lot of industrial metal. I, I, I've kind of said it, it's like Nine Inch Nails grinning inanely at you, but with Rob Zombie over here somewhere. <laughs> it's kind of, it's not massively serious, but it's massively serious. And I really like that. There's so much juxtaposition that, that's going on here. And there are points where you could say that it's really big and straightforward, but it's really subtle in places as well. And I, I, I do think that, it, that this song for me breaks those listening rules. I listen to them from start to finish. Sometimes I hit skip back one because I really like this song. And I don't think the album is ruined from actually this being there twice. <laughs> I will happily listen to it once. I'm going, you know what? I think this album would have benefited from this song being twice here. And we'll listen to it all over again. So that, that's my number one on what I think is a really strong album. All right. My number three is uh, Rhein Raus. The song that prompted me to buy this album originally. Um, I, I still really like the riffs in it. I like that kind of militant chorus um it's still pretty catchy right I, I i can see why i was drawn to buy this based on this song all those years ago so that's my number three um but oddly enough i found two other tracks on this album that i kind of like more uh i think adios is a really cool song right that's got fast-paced metal riffing the drums are pretty pummeling um again I have an issue with this kind of breakup in the intensity to throw vocal sections in and take them out and throw the riffs in and take them out and put the vocals. I, that drives me nuts about this whole album because there are parts of this album that I do really like. Uh, but that's number two, but, but most of the song I like quite a bit. Uh, my number one is uh, Spieler, right? I guess. Um, actually, I have no idea what the hell he's singing about, but the chorus is kind of catchy, right? I don't mind this one. Uh, I mean, I don't love it, but I don't mind this one. Um, and I think the riffs are pretty cool. Um, and this one to me is the most appealing out of all the songs on this album. They just, uh, the harshness that I'm finding with a lot of the rest of the album, I'm not really getting on this song. So yeah, I don't know. This was hard for me because I'm, I'm, I'm like trying to, I, I, after listening to this again, a couple of times, I'm like, all right, I'm obviously again, after all these years, not digging this album, but I'm trying to find the good things about it. And I did find some good things about it, but I think the stuff that bothers me about this album really bothers me. And I can't recall the last time I, you know, listened to a band where there were certain aspects of their music that really, you know, in, in a style, you know, in a genre that I generally love. Um, I, I, to me, it's kind of puzzling my dislike for this band, I think. But what bothers me about this band, I can't seem to get past. It's very strange. It's, that, this is very new for me. This is not something that I, I come into contact quite often because I, you know, there are going to be people who are going to watch it and say, oh, you just, you know, you're having issues with the non-English language and you're just a dumb American and all this kind of stuff. And I, I listen to a lot of other bands that sing in their native tongue and I don't have an issue with it at all. Uh, I find the German vocals on this album really, really, really harsh. And they're just, they don't compute with my ears. And like I said, and the choppiness of their arrangements really seem to bother me. But otherwise, a lot of a lot of great riffs on here. There's some intense moments on here, um, good headbanging moments. And yeah, maybe this is just a band you need to go see live to really appreciate. That could be. That could be. I don't know. I mean, it's clear that this is never going to be a favorite of yours, Pete. But as as the biggest fan of a hype sticker in the world, I do think that at least if nothing else, your number one 
you've definitely got the hype sticker now because if anything, Peter Pardo see your tranquility, I don't mind it. That that is gonna <laughs> that's gonna sell the single. <laughs> That's your number one. <laughs> that was your number one on the album. I don't mind it. <laughs> yeah. When okay. the box set comes out, there it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, I don't know whether I, I hated this album as much as Simon hated Led Zeppelin Four. I don't know. Or Stephen hated the Doobie Brothers' uh, Captain and Me. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Hard to say. Fascinating how we cross over on so much, and yet the things that we have disagreed on are so varied. Yeah, so varied that they barely even speak to each other. Yes, you know, and yet in all of these albums so far, the exception arguably being something that should be in our wheelhouse, which is Motley Crue, which we kind of united on not really connecting with anymore. If we ever did, I, I did, don't really know. Yeah, I, I did back. So there's two of us that kind of go, yep, I really like this. And there's one that kind of goes, nah. and it's not, we don't, this is not put on for anybody, by the way. This is genuinely. These are the thoughts we have about these albums. Yeah. 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 Well, just for everybody watching, we don't compare notes during the week of while we're doing this homework. Well, literally, when we come on and start taping, I have no idea. I mean, and obviously for this one, I knew that they were, you know, obviously like something more than me. But in most instances, like, quite frankly, when we did the Doobie Brothers episode, I was quite surprised that you didn't like that album. And there have been instances, I was quite surprised that Simon actually found some love for uh, Paranoid. On the last one right because i you know based on i mean we've all worked with each other for quite a long time now and sometimes you, you kind of know what the other likes or doesn't like uh, based on experiences but um yeah we don't we don't share notes and say oh yeah i'm, I'm hating this album that we need to do this episode we don't do that we just we go through the week we listen to what we gotta listen to we come on we talk about it and it's the first time we've talked about it you know Although they, they could be they could they could be sharing notes on Twitter and I wouldn't know about it. So but uh <laughs> no no we don't we don't no actually we try and give away as little as possible okay, on but... Twitter. But there are a, a hardcore of people who interact with us who are kind enough to give us their thoughts on the albums before we do the shows. And I think that the most that Simon ever gives away is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and that's as much as we kind of give away. So that it is fresh when it comes to it. We do not yeah, I mean, I know that Simon's a big fan of this band, so I knew we were going to come into this and Simon would be enthusiastic. Yeah. I'm a little bit more in the middle here. This is my favourite album by a band that I like, don't love, but I do like them. And we knew roughly where you were going to be. I was intrigued to see what a week's worth of listening to this album would bring. Mm -hmm. And it brought what it has brought, because these are honest emotions that we have when we listen to these albums. Yeah, yeah. So, And of course, now you, the viewer, down in the comments below... Please rank these songs on Mutter as you like them, right? So uh, remember, there's no right or wrong answers. Of course, my my all my answers are wrong today. Uh, that's what I'm going to hear. I'm fully expecting it because I know there's a lot of love for Rammstein out there amongst our viewership. So I am fully expecting the hate mail letters to be coming in. That is what it is, right? Okay, that's all right. I I can take. Um, so uh, uh, next week, uh, one week from today, we will be talking about our favorite albums of the year. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little reflecting on 2022 here on the UK Connection next week. Um, as we the year is <laughs> fucking done at this point, right? So uh, <laughs> it was it was just April, guys. What happened? Ah, it's crazy. So uh, and hopefully Simon will be feeling a little better next week and a little less under the weather. Right? Yes, hopefully. So. And I will be sure. I will be sure to have a beer next week. So, um, I would assume, I would imagine. I would imagine. So, cool. So, till then, uh, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together, all the damn time. Sing it, everybody. A line. The house. Not doing it. A line. Not doing it. No, nope. no, nope, he's not doing it. Simon's not partaking today. Okay, that's all right. He won't sing. I won't drink. There you have it, hey, Stephen. You got to do. You got to do it for everybody now. You got to. You got to drink and sing. <laughs> Doesn't really work, but I tried my that best. Sound better than mine. <laughs> That's closer. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> sorry, Simon. Sorry. I can't get free falling out of my head, so you know, it's just all your fault. For those of you who have no is... idea what oh. he's talking about, tune in tomorrow on ranking the albums. Okay. Although you'll have to you'll have to wait like almost two hours into the episode to find out what he's talking I about. I did. 
All I'll say is Simon kind of tuned in. <laughs> oh, comic genius on this show each and every week. I love it. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. For Simon Brain, Steve Marie, I am Pete Pardo. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. All that sort of thing. Thanks for spending some time with us. And we'll see you next Saturday here on the UK Connection. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Happy holidays.